live streaming is on. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to do this in English because uh, we're going to save this for, for another time. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're trying this new format where we are replacing the workshop format that we used to have at the Fab Lab uh, with a virtual version where we, rather than sort of gathering at the, at the lab and, and hosting a talk and having sort of a more analog seminar, we're, we're going to try this new format, format where we have these like small webinars where we, each of the, the employees of the Fab Lab is just uh, going over in a short hour, going over the, some of the stuff that we've been working on from home. And one of the things I've been working on from home is like trying to uh, set up and operate a custom CNC machine using a uh, GRBL. And I'm just going to quickly touch about what touch on what GRBL is, um, uh, how, what kind of like scenarios you could use it in, and some of the the stuff that goes on with it. Uh, GRBL is uh, an Arduino-based G-code player uh, firmware. Uh, it's uh, that's able to take G-code that is generated from some kind of CAD software, or in this case, CAM software, and play it directly to stepper motors and then you're able to, to control an actual machine with it. And it contains all the acceleration, the acceleration uh, motor profiles, how many steps per millimeter and all that stuff that you need to, uh, to run an actual machine. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quickly touch on the, like what kind of platforms you can run GRBL on. Like the most common platform is to use like standard, uh, Standard Arduino, standard Uno. Hang on a sec. Standard Arduino Uno. Uh, GRBL does also run on on the other platforms like Arduino Maker and there's a couple of other platforms that are coming up, but I'm not entirely sure of that. I've just been using the, the Uno. And what it does is that it replaced some of the other uh, machine control programs that we're used to. Sometimes we'll use something like uh, Mac Tree, which is running in Windows only, and is using the parallel port and Windows operating system to generate uh, stepper pulses that will drive the machine and the stepper motor controllers. And it takes input as G code and let you uh, control the machines, let you jog set zeros and uh, operate in that kind. The, the problem with, with that approach is that PCs, well, first of all, it's like a single platform only. So people running so Linux or, or Mac OS is not in the game. It's an old piece of software. And um, also PCs with parallel port is, is becoming like a thing of the past. It doesn't really exist anymore. So uh, there are different... Uh, different alternatives. But one of the, the the reasons why I got into to working with GRBL is that I bought this, uh, I bought a machine that I'm going to use to make a circuit board. I'm just gonna quickly show this machine. It's like a very simple CNC machine. Bought this on Amazon. It has, it comes with the, everything is simple. So it's it's like a simple stable control, stable motor driven uh, CNC machine. This comes with this control box. And I'm going to get into details with the control box later because originally this whole setup with these two devices, like the, the control box containing the stable motor drivers and the actual machine itself is a very typical way that these machines are distributed. And they're originally made to be plugged into a parallel port. And then um, I'm going to touch on that very quickly. So, Meanwhile, you guys are welcome to uh, to ask questions and ask for clarification. If there's anything, you chime in with comments, whatever. Is anyone there? <laughs> yeah. 
does the sound. Good. <laughs> anyway, most of these machines, or if if you if you buy a CNC machine uh, off eBay or off Amazon or something, or if you decide to build one yourself, it's usually uh, equipped with something like this. This is a converter board that will convert a parallel port connection to, for instance, a PC. So this connector, it has some drivers and some uh, some optical isolators in here uh, that will split out the signals from the, the parallel port input and convert them into these screw terminals. And you will be able to take the signals from here and put into whatever stable motor control you have sitting around. So if you've uh, built your own machine, if you have an existing machine you want to upgrade, or if you sort of buy a new machine, this is usually where it starts. Uh, what GRBL allows you to do is basically bypass the whole PC parallel port system. So in essence, what you do is should you have a, a firmware that runs on the Arduino Uno. It's connected via the USB serial connection to a computer. It doesn't have to be a PC. It can be a, a Mac, PC, Linux, Raspberry Pi, any computer that is, uh, is, is running an appropriate software that I'll get back to later. This software is able to generate the stepper step signal, basically the same signal that the parallel part of the PC would generate. So the very beginning of getting this thing to work is to make some kind of, what you have to make is a connection between the Arduino board and the parallel connector. And I, I'm going to show uh, an implementation of that. Uh, that I have made on this machine that I bought. It's going to be a, a bit of movement again. So I'm just going to move the camera over so we can have a look. This is the box that came with the machine that I bought. Could also be a custom made one. So basically, what we can see over here. It's gonna have, I'm just gonna find a pointing stick and see if we can show that properly. This bit here is the stable motor controllers that came with this with this unit. It's an integrated board, so that means that it has three stable motor controllers, has a whole bunch of power supply and stuff to run these uh, stable motors. And integrated onto this board is the board that I, uh, something similar to the board that I showed before with the parallel port connection here. It's a little bit hard to see in this image, but down here is like a D sub 25 connector that would usually be mounted through the back of this, uh, through the back of this uh, device. And that's where you would normally connect your, your parallel port. What I've done here is I've, I've moved this whole connector internally. So the, rather than it sticking out the back of this machine and, and, and going to the parallel port, it's now connected to these wires here that are in turn connected to this Arduino board that sits down here in the bottom. So now I've bypassed that whole parallel port connection. And instead, the end of the, the Arduino board, the, the USB connector is now sticking out the back of this unit and is able to be connected to, to a computer. So that, that's, that's one way to implement this, is to take an existing system. You can buy lots of different stepper motor uh, boards uh, that are somehow that somehow ends up in a parallel port connector, and then connect your own Arduino connection to that. So, what that does for you is that it allow you to not be dependent on a, a computer with an operating system that has a parallel port. So we will basically just uh, make our own motion control box. Whoops, it's gonna be this way. So that is the connection part of the, imagine that if you have, um, imagine if you have a existing machine, if you had taken an old printer apart that is full of stable motors, or you have like an old piece of equipment that just have like three axes and you wanna control those, you can buy an off the shelf stable motor controller with this stuff integrated connected up to this. You can also have a little bit of a different approach. A lot of, 
there's a lot of customized board that is uh, that is utilizing uh, something similar to GRBL. I'm just going to unpack this here in the background. Check. Um, this is another typical approach where you have something like a shield that goes on top of an Arduino and it has table motor controllers built into it. This one goes on top of an Arduino Mega and it's part of a kit to, to make a 3D printer. This stuff is also like useful for 3D printing. The same, same approach. You have an Arduino Mega, you put this thing on top, you put a little uh, stepper motor driver units into these sockets. You run GRBL on this system, and then you're basically able to drive the stepper motor directly with G code commands coming in through the, the parallel ball. I will, um, I'd like to demonstrate how to, to install GRBL and um, how to make the connections. And uh, you guys are very welcome to uh, to give me clarifications or suggestions or questions. Um, installing GRBL is pretty easy because it's part of the uh, the Arduino standardized libraries. I'm just gonna bring us over to Arduino here. So. It is now part of the standard Arduino library distribution. You go to uh, sketch, include library, and manage libraries. And it doesn't show up so well on this. I'm just going to share the whole screen here. So. But basically, you go to the library manager in Arduino, you search for GRBL. As far as I understand, there's only one distribution of GRBL these days. When I tried it the other day, it was part of the standard distribution, but apparently I don't know why. If you're just searching for GRBL, you can uh, get the distribution as like a normal Arduino install yourself. Let's say we downloaded this, clone it directly as a zip file. I'm not going to go into details on how to install the library because it's it's like installing a normal library, and I've, I'm sure there's lots of uh, of examples on how to do that. So if you guys can take it for face value, that uh, when you occasionally has installed uh, installed GRBL into your Arduino, I'm just going to quickly show how to use it. The way that the GRBL is implemented in Arduino is actually pretty funny. Uh, once you have installed the library, and as I said, I'm not going to go into details on how to install a library. Um, and it's that you you go to the examples, you go and find GRBL somewhere. You guys are probably listening. You choose the GRBL upload example, and all it does is that it allows you to to uh, to reprogram this onto your Arduino board. So it does. You don't have to do anything. You don't have any configuration configuration uh, options. You don't actually. The only thing you can do with this is to install it, like open the example, and program that onto your Arduino board. I'm just gonna quickly do this on this Arduino board that I showed on the screen before. All I uh, need to do is to select the, the, the proper board, an Arduino Uno. Select uh, whatever COM port, here we go. And upload. Everything from this point on is uh, basically programmed via the serial connection to the, to the Arduino board. So as far as software go, this is all you have to do. Just run this simple example, program it onto your Arduino board, and you're done. You don't have to touch Arduino again. Uh, at this point, you can interact with the firmware on the Arduino by just going to the serial port. I don't know if it's just me, but I can't see your screen right now. You can't see my screen? No, I've just got yeah. I don't know yes. about the video. 
same here. Hmm. Same here. Okay, I'm just gonna try and reshare it. Now we've got the board. How's that? Now we've got your screen. Thank you. Okay. But for some reason, I am uh, not not able to communicate with this board. I'm sorry, it's gonna take me two seconds. That usually works when I test it. Sorry about that. I just want to show the, the, the interaction with the firmware once it's uploaded. Um, once uh, Arduino has stopped crashing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to restart Arduino. Uh, in the meantime, I can like, uh, talk a little bit about the connections, how to, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll go back to the, the interaction once we have restarted out here. Uh, the connections between the Arduino board and the stable motor controllers are fixed. Normally when you do some firmware stuff like this, you will have like a whole bunch of options, like which, which of the pin goes to what stuff and whatnot. Uh, the creators of Arduino has taken sort of a much more uh much more conservative approach in that they have decided which pin which pin goes to what and that has a couple of advantages first of all as you don't have to like make any choice when you're building your machine and second of all all these different vendors that are producing circuit boards with built in a grbl compatible hardware is able to just make the same product and everything just fits so in most cases, you will be able to just upload the firmware and then you know that all the axes are connected to the right things and so on. So, so it's pretty easy to get that going. Um, hang on a sec. I just want to show the connections. There's a little bit, there's a few caveats that I would like to, uh, that I would like to go over. If I can find the right windows. That's it. This is what a typical uh, system that's based on GRBL would look like. Can you guys see my mouse when I'm mousing around like this? Typically, you would have uh, three stepper motors, one for X, Y, and Z axes. You will have some kind of stepper driver control steppers, as uh, stepper controllers, like stepper motor drivers. There's uh, one caveat with using GRBL in its standard form, at least. It is only compatible with stepper motors controllers, stepper motor controllers that use the step and direction pins. So that means like, the uh, stepper motors that has like a four pin, like those super cheap ones where you have to drive all the faces by themselves, but not really compatible with the standard uh, GRBL setup. So motor controls that have step and direction is basically what's compatible. Then some setups needs to have limiting uh, end stop switches for each of the axes, which means that whenever you're starting up the system, the 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 all the axes need to go to one and press on the switch so that you have a complete state of the system. That is not required necessarily for uh, an out of the box implementation using GRBL. You can basically just take some stepper motors, take some stepper motor drivers, throw some wires on it, throw the firmware on and start using the machine as it is. Uh, in some 
cases, it's interesting to have in-stop switches, which means that you can recreate if you, if the power goes out, if your stepper motors are coming over, or if you, you lose orientation at some point. It's always good to be able to go back to a fixed position so that you can resume a job that you're doing with CNC stuff. Right? So what they're showing here is uh, each of these wires that go to the lim limit axis switches have two switches on them. That's a system built in in uh, GRBL that allow you to have a switch at both ends, and they're kind of using the same pin. The Arduino Uno board does not have a ton of pins, so that's why sometimes they uh, you need to you need to um, be a little bit creative. So rather than having six limiting switches pin, they only have three, and then they're connecting the switches in parallel because the controller does have an notion of which way it's moving the motor so it knows kind of which end of the axis it's uh, it's touching on so um so that's one thing that's a little, little bit interesting on this drawing so apart from controlling the axes with step and direction and potential potentially having the end stop switches as an input to the to the system there's a couple of other pins that you can select that's like the reset abort you can connect a switch to it that will when you press on it, it will stop whatever it's doing. Uh, that's useful for safety sometimes. There's a feed hold, which is basically when you press that button, it will stop, It will, everything will still be going, but it's just stopping what it's doing and just pausing for a little bit. And then there's a resume button. So you're able to sort of like pause and resume whatever the machine is doing. That's useful for some applications. So, so that's basically the electrical setup of this system. Um, once this um once you have a system set up like this you are able to basically interact with the mechanical systems of uh using g code commands that are sent via the serial connection and that was what i was trying before uh arduino decided to not work for me it's gonna try again uh Ethan? yeah um what about the spindle motor? Does it have like a relay or something like that? Yes, of course. It does have a. Uh, they have two ways of interacting with the spindle. Oh, thank you for reminding of, uh, me of that for, for that matter. This has uh, two ways you can connect the spindle. You can either either use the spindle uh, a spindle on off connection, or you can use a spindle direction and uh, pulse width modulation for the spindle. So you can actually set the speed as well using G-code. Um, the, the turning the spindle on and off works by setting the, the pulse width modulation on the output to zero. So if you, whenever you you want your spindle to stop, it basically stop outputting PWM and your, the circuit board that uh, this the circuitry that you have connected to your spindle should be able to consider that stopping the spindle, and then there's an extra pin which tells you which way the spindle should rotate, and that's a that's a a, a mechanism that allows you to calibrate the speed commands you you issue via G code uh, to the value of the PWM. But I'll get back to that quickly later on. But thank you for reminding me. Uh, that's another way you can you can connect that just switches the spindle on and off, and that is in the case where you're using this uh, with a laser system, for instance, where you just basically turn a uh, yeah, laser or plasma or something on and off. But uh, that's a little bit of a, a fringe case. I'm I'm mostly just going to talk about like PWN. Um, I am just going to go back to the Arduino that is hopefully has hopefully uh, reloaded itself now. Uh, before I just uploaded this simple the the GRBL firmware and now I'm connecting to the terminal. Can all see my terminal window now? No. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you see. Uh, Right now, I'm able to via the serial connection to the uh, GABL controller at the standard 150-200 uh, connection. That's the standard connection for GABL, uh, ball rate for GABL. I'm now able to actually issue uh, G-code commands 
directly uh, in ClearText here. But there's also another set of commands that allow us to configure it, uh, to, to configure the the GRBL. Uh, the first command we will look at. Uh, the first command we'll uh, have a look at is uh, the uh, settings. Like uh, is querying what kind of settings is currently in the GRBL controller, aka the Arduino board. And I just want to say that that these uh, are remembered every time you switch it out. They're stored in non-volatile memory. So so whenever you you have configured your Arduino board for use with a certain machine, it'll just stay like that for the remainder of the time. The way you can query what state it is, is okay, that's really not working. <laughs> Hang on a second. Nope, I do not seem to have programmed this thing properly. So I'm just gonna try it again. Hang on a second, go to examples. Find GRBL and GRBL upload. Set this to the to the board. Okay. This Arduino board seems to be broken. It's a brand new out of the box. So I'm gonna take a new one. I'm sorry for that. And it's a very big firmware, so it does take a long time. It fills the Arduino Uno all the way to the brim. You can barely squeeze any more stuff in there. Not that you have to. You can open up the source code for this and make changes if you want some special functions. But the, the Arduino is almost completely full, so there's not much you can do. Now I actually managed to get this thing uploaded. So uh, can everybody see the terminal again? Can someone give me an education? Yes. No, the, ter the terminal is not uh, shown. It's only the Arduino workspace that is shown. OK, fine. I am going to uh, make sure that you can see the commands that I'm typing, because that's kind of the interesting bit. Hang on a sec. Uh, hmm. There we go. This was the one I would like to show you. OK, so once we have completed the upload of the firmware, or every time we turn this uh, board on, it is like uh, giving us a little message saying GRBO 0 0.9, uh, issue a dollar for help. If I issue the command dollar dollar, it will show me all the, the settings that are currently into this Arduino board. I'm just going to quickly run through a few of them. There's some like. The uh, pulse width of the step pulses that go out. Some stepper motor controllers are sensitive to uh, how wide the pulses are that goes into, for instance, the step. So you can you have a setting that says like how wide they are. This is normal. Uh, you, if you were setting up a machine like this on uh, Mac 3, you would do the same inside the setup. Um, then there's uh, some uh, options to invert the signal, like getting the motors to spin the right way. Usually you will connect all the hardware and then you very often you will find that some of the motors are going the wrong way. So by issuing some of these commands, you're able to reverse the direction of some of the steppers. So that's very convenient. Um, also, this, the, yeah, that's like a whole bunch of uh, uh, soft settings and stuff. Like I'm not going to go through those in detail, but uh, there's some speeds, like how fast how, how many steps per per uh, minute are, are this? Uh, how many steps per millimeter is your machine calibrated to? And you know you need to issue these numbers for your particular machine. So that's uh, it's a little bit of a process where you 
you command the machine to move a certain distance, you measure how much it actually moves, and then you calculate how many steps per millimeter. Or in case you design the system yourself, you will know these values and you're able to enter these into the control. Then there's uh, how fast you're able to, to move. That's usually a mechanical limitation, like how fast can the machine move for, for, for the given um, power and motors that you have. The acceleration, like how fast it can accelerate itself. And there's a maximum travel, like what is the physical confines of your machine so that it's not traveling off the end of your rails and stuff like that. Uh, there's one caveat with that. That only works when you have mechanical in-stop switches. That only works in the case where you're able to take, uh, start up the machine by, uh, by going to the very end of the rails and and getting a zero position because else it doesn't really know how fast it can travel. You don't need end stop switches. You can basically just move the machine around, find somewhere convenient. You say, well, this is my zero point. And you tell the machine now I'm at zero and then it will do all the, uh, the operations from there. Is everybody following so far? Is, is there any questions? Is this, uh, does this make sense? Yeah, Subar. <laughs> Thomas gets it. That's good. Okay. I can just uh, demonstrate how to change one of these settings. Say, I know that my machine is is uh, requiring 400 steps per millimeter rather than the 250. So uh, the way I would change that, I would say dollar and I say 100, for instance, dollar 100 means step per millimeter for the x axis equals 400 enter great the 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 machine says okay i understood this and if i do dollar dollar again and look for all the values uh you see you can see that that dollar 100 is now equal 400. this is stored to the non-volatile memory inside the arduino board so i don't have to do that ever again so it's a little bit of a set pro set up process you go through all these things and eventually you have your machine completely set up is this decimal uh, points? Uh, yes, you can use decimal points. You can how say, can step be a decimal because it's doing full step? Well, if your machine, say the lead screw in your machine or the pulley system in your machine is not traveling in uh, any full number of steps for a full revolution, then this number can be a, a floating point number. Yeah, okay. So depending on what kind of mechanical gear you have between your motor and your mechanical system, this can be anything. So it's not necessarily a whole step, whole, whole number of step pulses. Um, so this is, this is the mechanical design constraints of your machine. You have to fit it in. So that's all the, good. And yeah. Um, in the command prompt, can you like tell it to move as well? Yes, I can. So the, the, these, uh, these uh, what I've been doing so far is just changing the setting. Anything that does not start with a dollar here is considered a normal G code, right? So for instance, if I say, uh, at this point I can say G zero, which means go as fast as you can to uh, X hundred, Y 20, Z 40, for instance, I just want to say that I do not have a physical machine connected to this board, so I'm not going to crash anything. I can just write whatever I want here. So if I press like this, the machine moves and then it uh, it it gets back with an OK to me. Basically, what it does is like it uh, acknowledges all these G code that are sent them right away, and it has a, a queue system inside that basically build up a number of G codes so that whenever you go from one motion to another, you don't have to wait for the data to actually be sent to the other in board. And this is normal for motion controllers for all kinds of systems. That's just how it works, basically. And uh, we'll be we'll actually be able to see that in real life later on. So, so that's all good. We're able to, we have a, a setup now where we have some physical motors. We have a physical system consisting of axes and motors driving those that 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 transition around in a, in a in a physical space we're able to send g code commands to make those move and that's all good and done but 
but we still want to do something useful with it. And we're certainly not going to sit there and type in G codes to get stuff to move. So the next thing we need to do is we need a G code sender. Uh, so, so rather than having a, one program that does everything like Mac three, for instance, that will take our G code from some program like fusion or some other program that generates G code and then have the whole ecosystem of reading the G codes and, and converting them into stable pulses and so on. We have now made a break where we have an, an, an Arduino board that controls the motors and receives the G codes. And we need some means of getting from a G code file onto the Arduino board. And this is where, uh, where there are a lot of choices and where this system become interesting. There are 10, 15 different kinds of G code senders in all kinds of flavors. Uh, some that will read the whole G code, make a nice visualization of what the machine is going to do, make a big digital readout of where the machine are and do all those, those kind of things. I have uh, chosen to just demonstrate a simple one that, uh, that basically just take a G code file, uh, do some basic visualization and let you allow to control them, allows you to control the machine. I'm just going to start that up. Um, this project is called Candle and it's a uh, multi-platform. And I realize I do not have Candle on this machine. I'm sorry. I have sw switched, switched the computer since I made this. So I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to quickly download Candle. Very basic, very simple piece of uh, piece of software called Candle. Uh, right now, it's not connected to the machine, so um, most of these programs work the same way. You go and you choose some kind of serial connection to your board, and uh, it should normally connect automatically. Oh. I'm still uh, using the the terminal on the Arduino. So obviously you can't talk to two things at the same time. There we go. Now this program is connected via the serial port to the Arduino. And there's a constant communication going on between these two. Um, there's some basic functionality down here. You all see the, the, the candle main program, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I can use these uh, jog buttons to, to basically move the machine. You can see uh, there's a, a visualization here that like in, in, in 3D visualize how the machine moves. If I had an actual machine connected to this, it, it will uh, recreate those same movement in, in, in real life. Uh, I'm able to move the machine in, the, in all three axes, uh, intercept my workpiece in some way. And then I can use these, uh, there's a few buttons here. This is very common for all these different pieces of software. They will all have these controls. Some of them has extra functionality, like allowing you to uh, uh, execute macros, uh, do all kinds of fancy stuff. Uh, some of them are not even applications. They are uh, browser-based, so you don't even need to have a program installed. You could basically run it off a browser. Um, but, but this one is like a little VR yeah, thing, I think. So I can uh, set a an origin point in X and Y direction and in Z direction. So now I have touched my tool down on some, somewhere on my workpiece, and then I'm basically ready to 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 start uh, executing G code. I can try and uh, and open some pre-existing G code that I have made. This is a G code. I have made to um, to for circuit boards for for routing circuit boards. Let me just see. Hmm. Uh, see, we have some G code. Some nope. So 
Thomas, hvor er det, der ligger noget G-kode nede i den der fælles map, vi har? Ja, jeg smed lige nogle om i et sekund, der er bare i gang med at varme min computer op, så smed jeg lige nogle fede nogle til dig. Okay, fordi... Øh... Du skal en folder tilbage, og så ind i min, med en, min folder, ja. Den der, og så skal der ligge en... Jeg tror, du er en, du er en for langt nede. Du skal en ud for at komme ind i den rigtige. Ja, den er den her. Så ligger der noget... Nu har jeg bare taget en eller anden tilfældig hel her. Ja, oh, for, lige, den, der. den er lige voldsom nok, den der. Ja, det kan du da. Se, om vi kan finde noget igen. Simple G-code. Skal jeg have en short break, hvor vi we'll looker for the proper G-code? I don't know why we lost that. Anyway, I've changed to a new computer since we made this, so everything is not really in their proper spot, which is a total rookie mistake, but that's how it goes. It should work now. Yeah. If you go in, okay. into this, uh, the one that is called Thomas Share and then Thomas and that's then you go. That's good. I found another code here. This okay. is, uh, this is, a G code that we would normally run on one of the big CNC machines at the Fab Lab. Uh, it's cutting a piece of 12 millimeter fly plywood and it's doing it in two passes with the usual tool that we're using. Uh, this is using a three millimeter tool in a uh, two passes in 12 millimeter plywood. That's it. And um, all I need to do right now is, is just press send. And it will basically uh, uh, tell me that there's a tool change command that I need to in ignore. And then the tool, uh, it, it basically starts streaming the G code. So this is the same as the, the one of the big CNCs we do. Obviously, we haven't set, in, set all the, the parameters right for this particular uh, GABL board that I made. So for instance, it's moving very slowly. Once you install a uh, GRBL on a on a um, on a new Arduino board, it will set all the speeds to go really, really slow. So just so you're sure you don't uh, get in trouble in that way. So this is a little bit slower than you would probably normally run, but that's the you, stick you're to the speed all right. Uh, that's why. Uh, okay. So I can uh, I can go much faster if I want to here. So so it's basically running the 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 G code. This is probably generated in uh, in some simple cam tool that will take a two D drawing and put some tool paths on it and output some G code. Um, just want to see if I can find some my more complicated G code that Thomas has made. Need to pause this and that board. So basically now it just stops. Let's uh, see if we can load a new file. <laughs> so uh, 
So this is a, a piece of uh, piece of machinery that's generated in a in a couple of uh, different presses. That's that's one one caveat with this uh, simple piece of of a G code cinder, like the candle, for instance. The reason is that you can only do one tool. It does not allow you to execute macros, and some of these tools do. So whenever you want to have multiple tools, for instance, and you want to be able to mechanically change tools on your machine between different operation, you will have to make different uh, G-code programs for each operation. So this is uh, drilling some holes in a piece of aluminum. And uh, then the next uh, operation is to clean those holes up so that they they are good and nice. And then the next, next operation is to drill some spokes. So this is a machining aluminum with a simple. If you look at my webcam, Nikolai, then you can see the ready-made product. Yeah. I don't know if I can do this right now. No, but the, the others I can. Yeah. <laughs> see if I can. Uh, and just do the the last different cards out. So 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 this is the an example of of those operations you would use this for. So basically, this is a replacement for something like Mac three or Linux CNC um, that most of us has been using so far, and just a way a convenient way to use an open source tool to uh, either operate existing machines by making a conversion to let the GRBL Arduino board. Uh, control the parallel port of a, an existing machine, or in terms, if you want to build your own machine, to just add stepper motors and stepper thingies and and do all the calibration stuff and so on. So that's uh, that's pretty much uh, the that's pretty much the uh, the the gist of working with GRBL and uh, the things I've been working with while being in quarantine. I've uh, set up a couple of machines using this, and uh, eventually I would like to introduce this to the machine at the machines at the lab. So we will be using this instead of uh, the other types of software. Does anyone have any input to this stuff? Does anyone has any comments, questions? Uh, the the jack function in the yeah. right bottom is yeah. that the one you use when you have to do the setup of the steps per millimeter and stuff like no. that no no this is f for a normal day operation this is for moving the machine around and finding zero point for your tool and setting up a job and stuff like that so that is like actually using the machine in daily life there's a little window down here where you can um, uh, right now it is right now i'm able to in this little window uh you you can you can actually write g code commands and you it will be able to to get all the information in this tiny tiny window here I maybe mean, i can just maximize this so this this field down here you're able to write a g code command for instance and the machine will actually move There we go. So uh, as as you can also enter parameters for setting up the 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 stuff inside. You can do the dollar one hundred equal something directly in this program. So you can do the setup. But the the jog buttons are for everyday operation whenever you're moving the machine around and and using them. Anything else? Any suggestions like what we could use this for? Maybe you could just summarize what you've showed us today because I just forgot the original stuff that you showed. <laughs> okay. Um, GRBO is a, a Arduino based motion control systems that allow you to control stepper motors, whether in machines you have built yourself or existing machines that you buy. Uh, the the GRBL is able to execute G codes 
that are uh, generated in CAM software, such as uh, uh, Fusion 360 or LazyCAM or some other CAM programs that are able to take mechanical drawings and turn them into G-code. So it's basically the connection, it forms the connection between your, your CAD software and your CAM module to the actual physical hardware that controls your machine. And um, I personally find it very exciting because it will potentially replace some, some outdated or expensive systems and allow us to, uh, in a much more simple, straightforward and open source way to um, uh, create physical CNC machines. So that pretty much sums it up. Unless there's uh, any questions, I mean, uh, uh, can everybody see each other? Can everybody see the other participants? Anybody else uh, in this uh, group uh, has any, you know, experience with the uh, candle? Is it only Nikolai and me? Because it's basically just the first. No, I, I used Pronto Face. But I don't know if it's the same kind of program. Uh, Pronterface is is basically doing the same. That's true. Pronterface is made for uh, controlling uh, uh, 3D printers, because because 3D printers runs the uh, the most uh, open source 3D printers at least uh, use the same method for controlling the CNC of uh, controlling the the printer. So Pronterface is this kind of interface, but for a 3D printer instead. So this one allows you to move the the CNC machine around. It uh, allows you to turn on and off the spindle. It uh, allows you to set zero, and it does a few other things. Um, but this is in context of a CNC machine for for for, for machining stuff with a rotary ro uh, rotating tool, whereas Pronterface uh, has some other functionality. Uh, for instance, for setting the temperature of the extruder and to issuing commands to set the speed of the extruder and so on. Now, those are basically just G codes as well. They're just a different subset of G codes. So you could connect this program, this very program, you could connect to your 3D printer and move it around. Uh, you could also send it some like turn the spindle on commands and it will probably give you an error because it's, it would say, I'm a 3D printer. I do not know what that means. So uh, at the same same time, you could uh, connect, for instance, Pronto Pronto face to to this kind of CNC machine, and you could still use the jog function and move it around, but you probably not be able to start and stop the spindle and stuff like that. But will so, some of the G code be the same, like like the movement and stuff? Yes, ninety percent of the G code will be the same. There's some special G codes for 3D printers, and there's some special G codes that for 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 CNC machine. But uh, all things considered, they're mostly the same. So, uh, so so the way you communicate with a physical machine is basically the same. I mean, I I, I would urge you to try and uh, try and use Arduino and connect directly to your 3D printer and try 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 and type some C, some uh, G codes in and see it move around. It's good fun. It's also quite simple to write little programs that will generate G codes that make movement. So you can also use it in your own application if you're not CNC something or you're not 3D printing something, but you just want something to move around. For instance, we use this to control a robot arm at some, uh, uh, a little while ago. And um, it, it did not have an X, Y, and Z axis. It basically have like three motors that control the, the, the robot around, but you could still use the same software um, as a generic motion control. So yes, that's that's another way to use this one. But if you wanted to CNC with a robot arm, I've seen people doing this, then you probably need another way to create the G code, right? That is true. I mean, you could, Take exist if you wanted to CNC with a, a, a robot arm. What you could do is to could take the the CNC code, the, the the G code, to control a normal X Y Z spindle um, 
machine. Then you can run it through a program that will translate that into the, the motions that a robot would do. So it's just all the angles and the, how much you're reaching out and so on. And generate another subset, a, comp, a sort of like translated G code that will do the same thing. So you end up with the same motion in air, but you have to make some kind of intelligent translation between the two coordinate systems. Okay, so the GPIL will only like understand uh, X, Y, Z, normal setup. Exactly. So we'll control three axes. I yeah, think it four. only does. Does it do four? Yeah, it, it does four. Okay, so we'll control four axes together. So for instance, if you say uh, G1, X something, Y something, Z something, A something, it will sort of create a coordinate motion, coordinated motion between those axes. So they will start at the same time and it will stop at the same time. Assuming it was a linear motion, but it doesn't have to be. So, uh, so what, what about the last one? Is there a rotation around one axis and which one? Yeah, it could just be one area. Uh, there's an extra set of stepper outputs that you could just put an extra motor on and it will rotate. So, so every time you issue a G-code command with all the axes in there, they will basically start rotating and stop rotating at the same sign. So they will make a coordinated movement between the axes. Uh, and they will accelerate and deaccelerate with the parameters you set. But it does not necessarily need to be X, Y, Z and something. It can be any kind of mechanical system. Uh, it does not calculate, I mean, s some some of these projects, there are similar projects, not GRBL, but something, something else that will do the same kind of thing. And they will have some mathematical relationship between the, the, the position and the way the motors move. That is, could be quite complicated. It could be like a Delta robot, or it could be a robot arm, it could be something. And they will do the actual conversion so you give it coordinates in G code like normally. You say, I want to go to X, Y, Z this position, and then it will translate that into like some kind of weird motions with the motors to actually achieve that by the tip of the robot. But that is like way out of the scope for GRBL. It's it's just a dumb motion controller. It's like go from this point to this point in a straight line. But that's also very useful for a lot of things, and you can still do the other thing. You just have to do the math yourself. This, uh, this project has been around for, for, for a while, and I'm actually quite impressed with what you do. If you if you guys uh, go into Thomas feed and just look at his screen, you'll see he made some pretty cool stuff with this uh, just after a few days of setting it up with a machine. It's like, uh, It's like a, a pretty neat uh, mechanical system that is uh, made on the kitchen table with a simple eBay machine. So if I have a like a Proxon mini router, I could just uh, attach some motors and make it do stuff like that? Yep. That is exactly what this uh, project is made for. And I would highly recommend doing it. Or if you have an old 3D printer and you tape your procs into it, you can use the, the candle program to actually get it to do stuff. But there's a, a little thing. There's a few bugs and limitations in this candle software, by the way that you should be a little bit warned about. So if you, for example, you turn on the power drive of, of your stepper motor drivers, and then you start candle, then of course, it's going to reboot your Arduino. And with the system I got here, it's sometimes uh, sounds like it's exploding. So uh, I'm sometimes afraid of, you know, you know killing the, the bits in the machine. 
one of the things you can do to mitigate that problem is if you take the Arduino and you take the reset pin and you short that out, oh, yeah. uh, connect that directly to five volt with a little jumbo wire, then it will just, uh, that will take care of that problem. So it's just uh, Arduino's board, uh, Arduino Uno boards are made in such a way that whenever the serial co you connect to it with the serial connection, if you bring up the terminal in, in Arduino, it will reset the, the, the Arduino board and restart the program. And you don't want that because you want to retain the state of the machine and you don't want it to like forget where it is. So uh, putting that little jumper wire on there is highly recommended. Oh, there's but another one, Nikolai. There's mm -hmm. another bug in the or another limitation of the software mm -hmm. because if you hit the uh, the pause, there's no jogging around. You can't even lift the tool up and change the, a broken tool or something. No. So but the the reason why I'm using um, Candle as a demonstration, it was just a very very simple cross platform that everyone can download. But there are 10, 20 different other projects that will do the same in a more or less fancy way. So it's it's basically go out and figure out which one is the better one. And uh, for just stupid, simple things, this will be fine. But if you need special functionality, then you need to find another G-Code streamer program. So. But this is a very, very low entry level way to build a very capable CNC machine or just buy one off eBay and connecting this. And that is something that I can highly recommend. And I have been using uh, some of my work at home time during the situation we have going on to, to actually do that. And that has been very rewarding. Um, Unless there's something that has input to this, I will conclude this. And I would say thank you very much for your participation. Uh, we're going to try and do this uh, once a week, probably, over the next bit of time. And we'll try and uh, touch on different issues, uh, different uh, topics uh, of what this people have been working at home with, and that might be interesting for, for FabLab users. So I hope to see you and some more people uh, again, maybe next week. And um, with that, I'm just going to conclude this, unless anyone has final inputs. Cool. But then I'll just say uh, thank you for your participation, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.